just want to show you our rainwater collection system. Um, our house is uh, basically off grid as far as water is concerned. I mean, we have like a local water supply that never works, so we rely on rainwater, and uh, especially over the summer. Uh, over winter, the water supply does kind of work, the mains water supply, but we don't need it then because we're not really here. So over the summer, we have to rely on rainwater, and there's not a whole lot of rain in June, July, August here in Serbia, especially July, August, September. It can be really dry for like three months. So we have like an underground um, tank, which you can't see here. Uh, but it's this concrete, that's, the wall is part of it, um, and it's all underneath that sort of um, paving there. And it's 8 cubic metres, or a little bit less, 8 cubic metres. Not sure about uh, freedom units, but that's, uh, well, it's 8 tonnes of water, right? Um, which is quite a lot, and actually it keeps us going as a family. We use it for... Uh, flushing toilets, showering, even washing dishes. We disinfect it every now and then. We measure how much water, how much rain's fallen, and we add like the right amount of, um, you know, a chlorine-based uh, agent that you can buy. I mean, it's meant for like swimming pools and, and things. Although it's supposed to render water drinkable, but we don't drink it. And you can see how this thing works here. So. Water comes out from our roof, which you can't see very well. There's the roof, it's not huge. And it comes down this pipe and another pipe from the other side. You can see down, it comes down from there as well. Down from there, there's a horrible garage in the background which doesn't have any drain pipes, uh, any guttering, and so it's all just running down the side. I really need to figure something else. This whole bit is horrible here. There's all this water here. I need to figure something out for that. But we haven't been here, well, <laughs> we've been here a couple of years, but I haven't got around to figuring this out, all, all the details yet. But the water basically um, goes down into this thing, and I, I got this kind of, um, oh, what do you call it? Well, anyway, this piece of guttering that's, I don't think it's used for that usually, but this was an idea to kind of catch the water falling in. Um, and it kind of, from these two pipes, it just kind of falls into here, falls through and falls into here. Why does it fall in like that? Well, because I wanted it, I actually usually have this in place. And this is like, <laughs> really cheesy. I mean, I haven't quite put it in place. It's just like a temporary, temporary solution. But it's basically a, we haven't got a first flush, and um, if you don't know what a first flush is, a first flush uh, basically is supposed to clear out the gunk from the first few, you know, the first few minutes of rain, what gets washed down from the roof, you don't really want in your water tank, so the first flush would divert um, that first few, I don't know, tens of litres of water somewhere else. We haven't got one of those, I might make one sometime. But the idea of this net is at least to deflect all the big stuff, all the leaves. Um, you wouldn't believe the stuff we get in there, but I mean, in the gutters you get uh, leaves, you get dead bugs, lizards. Uh, we even had a mouse once. So um, obviously you don't want a drowned mouse in your water tank that you're going to use for washing dishes, even though <laughs> we do disinfect it. So this kind of deflects. Um, it's really obviously <laughs> very rough and ready, but it kind of works. It deflects the, you know, you can see it deflected the leaves off there. The barrel catches the excess, although it's long filled up. And, uh, the rest goes down this pipe into this tank. And there's a kind of, I put a, like a spongy thing in there. You can't really see it, but there's another bit of, um, a bit of foam in there that also collects the finer stuff. And it does actually quite a good job. It collects a lot of, um, fine stuff like, um, just earth, it like, looks like compost, I guess. <laughs> We've got some rotting leaves up there, or moss and stuff on the on the um, roof, so um, we don't want that in the tank. We don't want any organic material in the tank, really, right? And uh, so that stops a lot of it, and the rest of it just goes down this pipe and into this concrete bunker thing underground. 
and if it overflows, which isn't that often, but if it overflows, that's the overflow pipe there. And I've stuffed it up with um, a cloth to stop um, rats and whatnot getting in there. I don't know if rats want to go in there, but I don't want to find out. Here's a look from the inside. That's the top of that concrete slab that we were looking at outside. And here, ignore the mess in our garage. I say garage, I mean place where we literally chuck everything that we don't want. Um, and it goes down into here. You can hear all that lovely water going in there. Now this is a bit scary. If you're, if you're, what's the word? Um, well, anyway, if you don't like water, deep water and stuff like that. It might freak you out. So there's the tank. And that, if you can see the water level, that's a little over half full. So the final level's about here, you can see where the, where the water's been up to. Uh, this is the intake pipe for the pump. I don't know if we'll hear the pump in action in a minute, if anyone's using it out there. And you can see the bottom from here. It just, it doesn't really look like that much water, but it is actually a lot. So what we've got in here is, we'll measure it in a minute, but it's over halfway full. And here, you can just about see, probably, where it's coming in. Every now and then, as I say, we just chuck a, chuck a tablet in there, or chuck a little bit of um, chlorine-based powder in there. And then what I do, whenever there's a rain, I find my special stick. Where's my special stick? There we go. It's got, uh, this is the, the previous owner had done this already. Uh, marked, these are, these are depths, so 80 centimeters, 60 centimeters, etc. And I added like, I figured out the size and I worked out how many cubic meters, that was upside down, four cubic meters. So let's see. Um, Let's pop this down in there. This is what I do whenever I come. I just measure. Consider it's been raining all morning. It's just not that much water. It doesn't seem like it anyway, but actually, let's see. Well, that's about, so it says what? Uh, 70, 70 centimeters, so getting on for four cubic meters, which isn't actually as much as I thought, so that's not even half. You know, I'd really hoped with a big rain like that, we would have at least gone to maybe five or, or six cubic meters, but it's actually surprising how much rain you need and how much roof surface you actually need uh, to fill up a tank like this. So down to the cellar, and this is the newest part of the, the system which we just had um, changed. Down in the cellar is, uh, well, there's a little seed starting station, which I'll show you another time, which I'm just starting to get going now. And uh, behind this cupboard thing, which there's no business being here, I'll just dump that there for now, is uh, our pump. And that's um, a new one. Previously, it lived up in our workshop, which is up there. Uh, but now we've cut all that off and we've had it installed down in the cellar. Why? Because uh, basically that keeps it safe all uh, winter. You know, we don't have to worry about the pump freezing, which we did previously. We had to like empty the whole thing out and it was a worry. So it was up in the workshop and the workshop gets can get below zero in, in winter. So now we have this pump and it's a 1.6 kilowatts. I don't know if we'll hear it running. It does, it runs, you know, as long as no one's using water um, in the house, it's just sitting there. But um, as soon as, well, basically it's got this pressure vessel, which uh, I'm not too clued up on how pumps work, but the pressure vessel is uh, gets pumped up to a certain PSI or, sorry, uh, bar, which is about... Um, there we go, like 2.7 bar or whatever. And when it when the pressure in the vessel drops below a certain amount, then um, the pump, the the actual pump will kick in 
and um, put the pressure back up. And basically, uh, so the, the, there's relatively constant pressure in the system the whole time. That's the idea. And uh, that's why we got a new pump, because the old one was terrible. The pressure vessel was terrible. And um, there were real big variations in pressure. And we were having showers running hot and cold. And it just wasn't very nice. And now, basically, it, the, the pump pumps the water out. This pipe comes from... <clears throat> Excuse me, the pump comes from the um, tank that you saw and does its thing, pumps and goes into the system, into the rest of the house. So that's basically our rainwater based, uh, rainwater based water system in our house. And it's just like having running water in the house. But, uh, you know, we have running water in the house, except it doesn't come from the street, doesn't come from the main supply. It comes from a rainwater tank. So, you know, I love this system. I When I came here uh, and I saw it had a rainwater collection system, this was already in, by the way, kind of, when we came here. I didn't build this, so I had to make do with what we had. But um, I was really keen to keep this system in place and use rainwater. It's free water, right? And um, why would you not collect it? I mean, if you can, I know some places have laws and stuff against it and there might even be some justification for them but here like no one is bothering us um, if we collect rainwater and everyone around here does it here in um, kind of rural part of Serbia where they just uh, aren't very often aren't uh, water supplies you know city water supplies available uh, everyone has these these um, setups where they collect the rainwater, and we call it um, we call it like technical water. It just means that it's not drinking water, but you can pretty much use it for everything else. And you could get really elaborate, and you could um, you could uh, find ways to filter it properly, to um, purify. You could have a whole purifying setup, and I've seen people have got those. But that's probably overkill for us. Drinking water we bring in in bottles. It's no big deal. We we don't when when it boils down to it, you don't actually use that much water for drinking. So that's easy enough to bring in a few bottles whenever we come out here. And all the rest is lovely rainwater that falls from the sky. And instead of just running down here, which some of it is, but most of it is not. But instead of running down here and just eroding our um, hillside which we're on which I'll show you another time um, you know it's it's going into our tank and it's being used and then we can use it to water the garden as well when we need to um, eight cubic meters of water doesn't go very far <laughs> for watering a garden but we've got a few vegetable patches and if I water them a bit every other day in the when it's hottest in the summer or even every day you know the water can still last a fair amount and um so i'll take it 